Hello and welcome to Lansing Pulse. I'm Ken Miller. Today joined, as always, by City Administrator Tim Vandal. Tim, uh, and we started this uh, program off the same way, more or less, the last, well, going on a year. Uh, let's do a COVID update. I know the City Council revoked the mask mandate in early April, and we're recording this the last day of April. Um, recently, the CDC said it's no longer recommending mask wearing for those who are outdoors and fully vaccinated. So for Lansing, in your view, are we getting closer, maybe we're never going to get there, but are we getting closer to pre-March 2020 normalcy? Yeah, I think we are. And it's been really nice the last month or so, starting to see things get back to normal. Recently, we started resuming in-person council meetings and... Uh, you know, Zoom is handy for certain things, but I, I tell you what, it's it's been really nice to have everybody in the same room again and, and kind of brainstorm ideas and things like that. So I've really enjoyed having those in-person council meetings again. Beyond that too, you know, we've got youth soccer going on right now. We're doing sign up, or we recently ended sign up for youth t-ball and baseball. That's going to take place this summer. All of these things that folks in Lansing would look forward to in the spring and summer months, we're going to do, and uh, we're really excited about that. So you're right, we're, we're getting back to normal. Uh, but the other thing too, we, we need to uh, remain vigilant, you know, who knows if there's going to be some type of variance right, or anything right. like that. So we, we do need to be intelligent about things. Uh, one thing that was really cool, though, uh, at a recent council meeting, uh, Councilman Dixon, he had kind of mentioned that even though, uh, you know, the, the mask mandate was rescinded uh, a few weeks ago, you still go out to businesses in Lansing and Leavenworth and you still see a lot of people wearing masks. You still see people trying to be irresponsible. Right. Uh, so he, he had mentioned that at a recent council meeting and, and he really hit the nail on the head on that. And that's exactly right. Uh, people are still trying to be smart, still trying to be safe about things. Right. And just as a personal aside, I know I'm still wearing masks like I mowed my lawn yesterday. And a lot of times that causes me to have allergy problems, but I'm wearing a mask now. And I think that because I have masks, I got plenty oh. left over. Um, that's the kind of thing that like maybe that's going to carry forward. They talked about flu season being mm -hmm. almost non-existent. Yeah. You know, is that from all the mask wearing? Yeah. So I think there's some unintended benefits maybe um, from the mask wearing. So uh, one of the events that you didn't mention, but that's coming up, and we just put out a news release about it the other day, um, we are going to have a 2021 Youth Fishing Derby. Um, and that's scheduled for May 22nd. There's more information uh, available on the website, lansingks.org. Uh, but I remember last year when we did it, and we, I think we had a lot of discussion, you and Jason yeah. from our parks yeah. director, are we going to have it or are we going to not? You know, it's an outdoor event, but it's COVID. So, you know, we did it, and we had everybody kind of socially yeah. distanced. I know they marked off yep. you know, 12 by 12 square. Anyway, it seems like there are some changes to the upcoming event this year. But it's going to be a little bit closer to normal, and I guess I'm hitting that theme a couple of times. Exactly. So it's it's at Bernard Park again this year on May 22nd, uh, but we don't have any limits this year. Like you had mentioned last year, we tried to box out some areas so people could spread out in a family unit, whereas this year uh, we don't have any uh, numerical limit for how many fishermen can be there. So feel free to sign up your kids. I believe it's $5 per child. Uh, I do believe we're not doing in-person registration the day, day of the event. We're not. We're not right. Yeah, so we, we need people to sign up for that in advance. Right. Uh, beyond that, though, feel free to sign up. Five dollars. It's a really good deal. We stock that pond with right. hundreds of fish. Right. Uh, so it's one of those things that the kids usually... Uh, you can't help but catch you, a fish. You can't help but catch a fish, right, exactly. Right. So I, I believe we provide the worms. You just have to bring a fishing pole. Right. And it's a great event for kids. And a lot of times, too, we'll have kids uh, who don't even live in Lansing, kids who live right. out in the country, kids who live in Leavenworth. So it's a really great community event, and it's a feel-good event. One other change from years past. Um, they are not doing a picnic lunch oh, yep. this year. Um, hopefully that will be able to come back next year. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it, it's more or less back to normal, and that will be on May 22nd. Um, all right, so it's not always about COVID, although COVID seems to leave its fingerprints on everything. I know staff is continuing to work on the 2022 budget. You've really been doing that since March. Give us an update there. So a lot of our department heads have submitted their budget requests over the last week or so. We feel really confident about keeping our property tax rate flat or potentially even reducing it slightly. 
Um, you know, with, with every budget, there's those main projects that you're trying to make sure you can fund for the upcoming years. Uh, for us, some of those projects include our Parks and Recreation Master Plan. Right. Uh, that's going to be $5 million. So debt service on that is going to be hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. So we're trying to make sure we plan for that in a way that doesn't raise property taxes. Uh, we're going to be making some really significant improvements to the intersection at K7 and Eisenhower where uh, the new quick trip and car wash are going in. Um, we're looking at doing some really large drainage projects in the next couple of years. And it's one of those things too, I feel like drainage projects, maybe people don't think about them as much, uh, but some of our drainage projects are like $300,000 yeah. each. They're not cheap. Yeah, they're not cheap and a lot of times too, they're under roads. So you've got to tear out the road and you've got to reroute traffic. So but anyway, there's, there's a couple of drainage projects that we're working to make sure we can fund. All of those things, in addition to the other costs that are constantly going up, whether it's health insurance, the cost of asphalt, the cost of materials, you know, all of these things are constantly going up. So even though it's nice when, when valuation goes up, it makes it a little bit easier to do our budget, you know, health insurance never stays flat. Right. Uh, employee wages don't stay flat, or if they, if they do, you won't have many employees right. left. So I mean, there's, there's always a lot of things that, uh, even outside of those really major projects, that uh, you need to budget for. Uh, so we're working on that right now. We feel really good about where we're at. Um, like we talked about, our valuation has gone up. Our sales tax revenue has gone up a little bit. Uh, we feel Which like- surprising because of COVID. Oh yeah, that's been really yeah. surprising. And, yeah. But you know, we, we feel like Quick Trip helped out a little bit. We feel like because of COVID, maybe more people were shopping at Aldi or if they're mm -hmm. shopping online, you know, you're, you're getting some sales tax based on where right. that generated from. Uh, so there's been a lot of things that have been really beneficial for us, um, but like I said, we, we're, we're, we're cranking out our budget right now, we feel good about it, and I want to say our May work session, we're going to be addressing our budget. All right. Okay, All right. so you mentioned Quick Trip, you mentioned the car wash, let's stay with that development theme. How about starting with the new bank, and again, today is April 30th, I think in the next week or so, the bank is going to be open, at least that was the, the uh, news that I heard. You know, and I, I don't have an exact date yet for the grand opening, but it's been so terrific to see uh, just the progress they've made at that location. It's just a, mm -hmm. a wonderful looking facility with beautiful landscaping and uh, just really proud of that, uh, that bank right there. I think it's going to be a welcome addition to uh, the Lansing Main Street Corridor. Uh, I, I don't have an exact date yet. I, I would guess in the next couple of weeks because mm -hmm. you're right, it looks like it's pretty darn close to done, right. but, uh, but we're very excited about that. That's, that's going to be terrific. Uh, yeah, that car wash, I believe the car wash is going to be open in the next month or two, and uh, that's going to be another really positive, uh, positive business for Lansing. I don't think that's going to generate a lot of sales taxes, um, but it'll be a, another business on the property tax rolls, and uh, it'll generate a little bit of money for a sewer utility mm -hmm. also, so that's a positive thing. Uh, we're expecting Harbor Freight to break ground hopefully in the next couple of weeks and we are anticipating a fall opening so uh, people can get their Christmas presents yeah, right. at Harbor Freight this year. But you know we were talking too about sales tax and, and all of those things and Harbor Freight is one of those businesses that uh, you know you, you go in there and you buy some tools something might be 70, 80, 90 dollars. Right. Uh, so sales tax on a business like that is really going to be beneficial for the city. Yep. So we're, uh, we're hoping that opens uh, perhaps in late fall. You know, I, I feel like we're getting close on a couple of things in uh, town center. Uh, Mayor McNeil, Matt Schmitz and I recently met with uh, someone about a business in town center. Uh, so I, I feel like we're getting really close on a couple of things there. Um, but uh, you know we're, we're probably still a few months away from any type of announcement. Um, well, since you brought up Town Center, and, and again, we, we've been over this before, you have to be very tight-lipped about folks yeah. that are taking a look, but would you say since the city has more or less taken over Town Center, at least the marketing of it, are you seeing a different level of interest now and getting some of those feelers maybe more often than we did back when it was other people marketing? Absolutely. I feel like we've had a lot more interest in it uh, the last, you know, six, seven months. Mm -hmm. 
you know, the city's price is probably one third of, <laughs> of what it was when it was that like, generated. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. You know, I, I, the, the city council was pretty adamant. You know, we're we're not in this to uh, to be turned into profit and turn into property developers. We want to make our money back. We want to pay off the debt on right, it. Right. But uh, and you know, job creation and job creation yeah. too, and sales tax generation, mm -hmm. property tax generation. So I mean, it's it's one of those things. I think you know the previous owners were were business people, and uh, you know God bless them. They were trying to turn a profit, mm -hmm. but uh, I think the asking price was that's why it sat vacant for 15 right. years. Uh, whereas now the city's asking prices. Uh, you know, I, I think you could probably look at it compared to other commercial properties in the area and we're probably a little bit lower mm -hmm. for a better location. Uh, so that's been really reassuring. Um, you know, getting back onto the development discussion though, one of the things I was going to mention, because we've, we've had so many positives, um, so one thing that you know uh, we're still working on that's, that's been a little bit of a negative is we, we haven't seen residential development the way we'd like to see it. Um, you know, in the past, Lansing was known for a lot of beautiful new homes and new neighborhoods and things like that. And the last couple of years, we just haven't seen that. So I know we're, we're kicking around different ideas on what we can do to re-kickstart residential development in Lansing. We're hoping to see Fairway Estates get kicked off uh, maybe later this year or earlier next year. But beyond that, too, I, I think there's another really prominent location in Lansing uh, the Ryan property that's going to be going up for auction in a couple of months and uh, you know I know they already had some preliminary layouts for residential development some ideas so that's a property where you know you could see 200 homes mm -hmm. uh, in the next decade and it's in a pro it's in an area too where it's pretty easily sewerable it's on some major roadways mm -hmm. so I, that's really a, a marketable property from a residential standpoint but the thing that you know we're hearing from developers that you know I think it's happening all over. Just the prices of materials are skyrocketing. So it's just incredibly hard right now to build homes, even with interest rates what they are. It's getting incredibly challenging to build affordable homes. Uh, so that's a tough nut that the city council is trying to crack. Uh, but we are trying to re jumpstart residential development in Lansing. All right, let's wrap it up with uh, mill and overlay. Mill and overlay season is coming up. Summertime road work. Um, I know the city council, in fact, just last night had a work session, and that was one of the issues on the agenda. Talk a little bit about how extensive street work will be in the summer of 2021. And I guess it still has to do with we've got a bid, and I don't know, this just came in a couple of days ago. Yeah. You know, did the bid come in lower, um, allowing us to potentially add more yeah. work? Because that's happened in the past. We've been able to add a couple of projects to that list. But I. I'm talking too much. Give us the latest on that. Yeah, no, you, well, you're, you're exactly right. We received a fantastic bid from Little Joe's Asphalt in Bonner Springs. And, uh, you know, based on that bid, we're able to get all of the roads that we anticipated getting. And we were able to fund all of the alternate roads as well. Okay. And uh, even with all of those, we were still under our budget. So then we started to think about different areas where we can improve curb and gutter. Um, so I know we're adding a, a few more streets in the Stonecrest subdivision. Since, since the crews will already be in that neck of the woods, uh, we're going to tackle some of those streets. So I know we're, we're kicking around different, uh, different streets that we can add on to that are close to where the crews already are. Uh, but you know, the, the final price tag on that is going to be well over $500,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So I mean, it's, it's not cheap when you're, when you're repaving roads. Uh, and like I had said too, uh, Stonecrest, that area, that's going to be a pretty significant project this summer. Uh, but I want to say West McIntyre also, mm -hmm. that's going to be another really significant portion of our road work. So there's a lot going on there. I want to say there's, there's three or four blocks also in neighborhoods east of K7 that we're going to try to tackle as well. But I tell you what too, uh, we've been using Little Joe's. They've always come in as the low bid. Uh, at least ever since I've been here, mm -hmm. maybe before that as well. Uh, but since they are a, a relatively local company, they've been really good to work with. They try to be accommodating with, uh, with folks when they can. And it's almost like they have it down to a science where you, know, you, you take up the old asphalt and then when you're laying it down, you can't have traffic on it for a little while, right. but, uh, but after a little while you can drive on it. Uh, but their crews are just, we, we feel like for the most part, they've been very helpful with our residents. 
Uh, they're right down the road in Bonner Springs, so we can give them a call if right. something's going on. So I, I think that's going to be a really positive improvement for Lansing this summer, and uh, we're really looking forward to it. All right, and a shameless plug, uh, in the next week or so, I'll be doing another video interview with our Public Works Director, Mike Spicklemeyer, and we'll be fleshing out yeah. the mill and overlay season and where it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, uh, so uh, look for that online uh, when we get that one taken care of. All right, I've been speaking with City Administrator Tim Vandal for Lansing Pulse. I'm Ken Miller.